They've had trouble, terrible trouble with injury this year. David Fairley is back, and this will uh, delight Peter Louis, who for the first time in a few weeks has had his has got his first string team out. Yeah, it looks more like their number one lineup tonight on their professionalism and their commitment to get them their valuable two points here. We're underway here at Carrara. Paul Simpkins gets us underway. This is Wes Patton with a little sleight of hand down on the touchline. And already he gets a cheer from this Carrara crowd. Already in Patton again. The long ball out for Orr. Looking at his centres now. Brings in with a big hit on Jason Nickel. And they've turned over possession. Yeah, and that's a good warning shot from Ben Eichen. It was said before the game that they're targeting Eichen's defence. Greg Florimo said he's worked very hard on it. And Ben Eichen came crashing in there just to let them know if they want to run his way, they're going to have to do it quickly. So the Bears with the ball in hand, and it's Brendan Hurst with the big hit there. This is Moore. Great bust here by Michael Butner. He has no support. Soden's there now. They'll want to fast play the ball. They may not get it. They do now. Soden for Taylor. The long ball. They've got numbers out to the left. Sears, the inside ball. Brought down 15 metres out from the Gold Coast line. Last tackle for the Bears. Florimo for Taylor. Goes to the air. He's got Nigel Roy up to the right wing. Roy goes high. And he's put his... Trying to a try there for the moment, but it's Graham Mackay, this wonderfully experienced Gold Coast captain who cleaned up at the back. A yeah, good little passage there by North Sydney. Found a break from deep inside their own half. Here's a mistake by Wes Patton. He's going to turn over ball for the Gold Coast for the Bears as well too. They went to sleep after they turned that ball over. Here's a kick across field from Jason Taylor. Russell under the ball. Roy goes high. Russell knocks it back and Roy knocks on there. Cleaned up by Graham Mackay with his strength is able to get back into the field of play. He's always been a very big kicker of the ball. Not always that accurate. Well it didn't look all that good from the time it left his boot and in the end it wasn't. He sent it wide. It's a bad mistake by Nigel Roy too there. That ball going over the dead ball line would have given a, a 20 metre dropout by touching it. Nigel Roy has, has brought the kick back some 20 metres to a goal line dropout. He put enormous pressure back on his team because it'll be the Gold Coast to run it back at them. This is McCallaghan takes play up to the 30 metre line. The Gold Coast with all the play. Patton. Slightly suspect pass. To Michael Goodrich. He's on for Marty Bella. This is Driscoll looking around to offload. Can't do so, but they're inside the 20 metre line, the Gold Coast. They work it to the left hand side through Orr. They fake the inside ball, and Orr will take the tackle 12 metres out. Patton. Goddard for Schloss. Schloss stepping off his right foot, looking around for support. Can't find any. Last tackle now for the Chargers. Patton. He goes to the air. Where's Patton? He goes high. They're out wide for Mackay. Mackay gets it back and Russell will score. Shane Russell goes in in the corner and the Gold Coast have taken the lead at Carrara. Yeah, great work by Graham Mackay here. You'll see his players running in to pat him on the head. The high kick across there from, from Wes Patton found the mark and Graham Mackay didn't go up to catch the ball but was able to get the ball back down to Shane Russell, who'd gone up in support. You see Mackay here high above the pack, gets his hands above the players, the North Sydney players who are trying to catch it. And that's the beauty of being the attacking team when the ball goes up in the air. The defending team have to catch it. The attacking team have just got to knock it down and get it back into play. And Graham Mackay was able to reach way above the defending players there with his, his outstretched hands and knock the ball back down for Shane Russell. Just a little bit of a wake-up call for the Bears now. They must uh, hit back straight away. They've forced an error straight off the kickoff. Huge hit from Steve Trindle. On his opposite number, Damian Driscoll. And that has brought the ball... Oof! That has brought the ball straight back to the Bears in great attack. Consider the Gold Coast underachievers or... 
for the North Sydney here. When you're looking to lift your tempo, it's the speed of the play the ball that can do it for you. And a couple of quick play the ball there has brought a penalty for them. Kick out now and a great attacking opportunity here. Jason Taylor marshalling his troops around him. Soden from dummy half finds Taylor just five metres out. Great attacking position, the Bears. They work it to the left-hand side. Quick ball to Moore. Another fast ball. And Ben Eichen will go over and score and finally put the Bears on the board. Yeah, nicely constructed play here. North Sydney in recent times have, have been criticised for the fact that a lot of their play comes off Jason Taylor. In this particular raid, they set up around Jason Taylor, then Jason Taylor took the ball to the line. And from there, the back rowers were the ones that put the play on on the edge of the ruck without Taylor. Willie Lation, a good little ball, Billy Moore, and then a, a, a quick pass back on the inside. A set play there from the North Sydney Bears. They came to the post, they looked as though they were going to go with Jason Taylor. They're inside the 10 metre line, the Gold Coast, as Patton finds Nahi. He'll play it now for Sattler. This is Durham going close, but brought down just a metre out. They trail by six points to four. Patton. The long ball out for Orr. He's got numbers out to his right. The inside ball comes from McKellar. And he's met in a front-on tackle there of Billy Moore. This is Driscoll for Orr. Long ball for Patton. Over the top it comes to Mackay, who steps inside. Frees it up for Russell. And Russell could twist and turn. Can he get it down? No, he can't. Last tackle now for the Gold Coast. Patton will kick through behind the posts. Eichen, can he get it back out into the field of play? He slips over. And on his back is put down a metre inside. So there'll be a line drop out and great defence there from the Gold Coast. Yeah, there was. Wes Patton faded across the field there. I thought the short ball was on. He threw a long ball to Graham Mackay. The movement broke down and this kick dangerously close to the post. I can look to sure money was going, was going to get out, but he slipped. Just a dart out of dummy half. Ghost Goddard puts on the fan. He's got space and support. This is Mackay with space, the inside ball, and it's put down by Shane Russell within sight of the line. Oh, you talk about opportunities. Well, you can't believe that. A good little break out of dummy half there. The ball out to Graham McCoy. He looked home for all money. He gets a call back on the inside. Matt Sears very, very quick. And a great covering tackle there by Gary Larson. It is amazing how much ground this big man covers in a game of football. Taylor. The kick over the top from Butner and the collect. He's got Taylor inside. Cho chooses not to take him. It's the last tackle he had to offload. And there's been a handover, and Patton finds some space out of dummy half. And that was Gary Larson again, covered from the other side of the ruck there when Patton got out of dummy half. And it, you're talking about a big front rower running around doing 20 hit-ups and 40 tackles in a game, but still with the energy to chase a smarter and faster player. I don't mean smarter, I mean, <laughs> I I mean quicker and faster, a quicker, a, a more agile. Like what you're saying is he's neat in appearance. Yeah, exactly. Anything but smarter. <laughs> These forwards don't like being told that the backs are smarter. Eventually put down on the tackle of Brendan Hurst. There's a, a few concerned faces on the North Sydney bench. Straightening up the play and running straight into Larson again. Think about Gary Larson as he does it week in, week out. He does so much of these things that go unnoticed by people. Space here for Goddard. Runs around another. He looks for support. He finds it now in Patton. Patton needs to link up with his outsides. He may not have to. He runs back inside. And Wes Patton scores a glorious try under the posts. Oh. Wesley Patton. <laughs> he, runs, he runs with the ball on the end of his fingertips. He looks everywhere but where he's going. You see a little offload here. Has just caught Gary Larson. Well, tiredness has got him eventually. A good run there from Goddard, who finds selectively Wes Patton. Wes Patton runs with the ball dangling, looks for all money like he wants to pass. That just holds the North Sydney players off. Oh. And with the white ball dangling, 
The initial offload from Driscoll came back for Goddard, who pushed off Larson and found some space. Stepped inside Sears, and when he looked around, he found Patton. And look at Patton, he's looking around everywhere, and eventually he sees, well, I might actually score here, which is precisely what he does. Oh, and the crowd loved that. The Gold Coast in front by four with a kick to come, and this is right in front for Darren Anderson. The game has come alive here at Carrara. Gold Coast. Well, they've done it at the other end of the field, Gold Coast. Great attack up one end, and now great defence on their goal line has turned North Sydney away yet again. Florimo looked for all money as though he was going to score on the charge there. And they had a couple of opportunities on tackle five. And here they are confidently again. Where's Patton? Patton with straight space. through. He's got Mackay in support, and Mackay runs straight at Petherbridge, and the inside ball goes to Soden. Oh, Graham. The, the Gold Coast skipper should have known better as... We go to the point post for a field goal at this early stage remains to be seen. They seem to be keeping the play in the middle of the field. And I wouldn't mind betting they're looking for a seven-point break. Sattler will play at 15 out. It comes for Patton. This is Nahi. Looks for the gap, Nahi. He's held. Five metres out. The Goal Coast on attack. They come to the blind through Anderson. Last tackle now. And over he goes. Nahi, from the play of the ball, has barged across, and the Gold Coast are out to a 10-point lead. Oh, I love that one. Chris Nahi, the big number 16. Look at this, just stepped off that left foot of his and charged over. Well, if you need a convincing, any first-grade footballer sitting at home watching the Optus telecast tonight from Carrara, beware when you come to the Gold Coast. This is a very, very good football team. They've got a 100% record here this year. They've only played one game and they beat Balmain by 20 points. This time holding his face. So trouble twice tonight for the, the Gold Coast fullback as North Sydney threatens down the right-hand side. He's got a cut to the face somewhere. This is Larson looking around for support, finds it from Taylor. Taylor steps off the left, finds Fairley. They've got numbers down the right-hand side. Here goes Butner, and Michael Butner will score. That's where they hurt them, quick hands out to the right-hand side. And when the ball came out for Michael Butner, he had about a 25-metre run to the line and no one in front of him. They've come back to just six points, the Bears. Yeah, second phase play here, Gary Larson. Able to stand in the tackle, gets the ball back to Taylor with a good left foot step, is able to get to the outside. The next pass on the outside of Patton and Bella. And Butner, clean pair of heels to the line. And Jason Taylor quickly said, give me the ball. And give me the sand. There it was, Taylor with that left step. The fast hands came for Butner. And he had no one in front of him. The gap was about 20 metres wide. All he had to do was find the line, and from 25 metres out, it's pretty easy to do when there's no one in front. This is Taylor to bring it back to a four-point ball game. Which is precisely what he does. The Bears are back. 16 points to 12. The Gold Coast leads. They have a fantastic last 13 minutes to look forward to. Yeah, well, the Bears supporters will breathe a sigh of relief at the moment. They're back in the ball game. Things didn't look so good a minute ago. I was just about to say, if North Sydney held hopes... ...second brought down. Just a couple of metres in from touch. This is Hall, who hasn't been put down by anyone yet. Jason Taylor warming up to the right with some running. It comes for Taylor at first receiver now. Brings the traffic back inside, and this is Florimo with space. He offloads for Soden, who's brought down on the 20-metre line. They've got numbers out to the left. This is Taylor. They're lining up for more. The numbers are out wide, and it'll be Chris Caruana who'll go in and tie up the game at 16 points all. Well, it was a numbers game in the end. When they came out to the left-hand side, it was about five onto three for the Bears. And with a short pass over the top, it just really proved too much for the Gold Coast. Taylor running at the line, the short ball for more. The pass over the top for Caruana, and he had about a five-metre run in to score. Yeah, back-to-back -back plays by Jason Taylor. He went over to the right-hand side of the field, turned the ball back on the inside. They made an inroad, and then swept around, brought the ball to the left-hand side. He and Billy Moore 
came up with space for Chris Caruana. He's put it right in the corner and found television wires in his favor. Rather than just pull them out of the way, he's gone back right to his routine from the start again. Marks out his run up and comes back. This for the lead. He moves in. There you go. Look at that. He brings it around and the Bears are back in front. Less than five minutes to go here at Carrara. And it took two acts of brilliance from their captain to do it. The first was this little run. He had numbers outside. It was the short ball for Moore and then the pass over the top to Caruana. And the second one was the... Thanks, Eric. Well, uh, bad luck. Jamie Goddard, it was a, a great match and went right down to the wire. Yeah, mate, that's where uh, good teams have got to uh, control them wins and uh, really put a team away. And at the moment, we're not doing that. At 16-6, did you think you had them yeah. shot? Yeah, I thought we did, but uh, off the kickoff, uh, we made an error and we should have uh, really been down there defending instead of them on our line. That's football, isn't it? A couple of errors and then you, you give possession away and, and they take advantage of it. Yeah, that's right, mate, yeah. What about your own personal form? You've had another great game tonight. You, you're in line for a state of origin berth, perhaps? Mate, yeah, that's out of my hands. i just got to hope that I keep playing well and um, never know what happens in a few weeks, mate. The Coast have, uh, have shown a lot of grit over the last few weeks and, you know, the performance have been heartening for as far as, uh, you know, finals and uh, aspirations are in 97. Yeah, for sure, but we're, um, we're not happy unless we're winning games, Bomber. We're, uh, we're sick and tired of being just beaten. We want to become serious uh, finals contenders. All right, congratulations. Bad luck tonight. Uh, you know, let's see how we go next week. Thanks, mate. There he is, Jamie Goddard from uh, the Gold Coast Chargers. And joining us now is uh, North captain Jason Taylor. Jace, uh, you got out of jail tonight, really? Yeah, we certainly did. It was something that it's, it's been plaguing us over the last few weeks. I think hopefully we, we could have turned a bit of a corner, though, tonight because we've been struggling. There's, there's been about that. We, we played OK in a couple of our games, especially against Manly. It's just, it's just simple things. And, and we're just not performing well as a team, just silly drop balls at times that are hurting us. Uh, it's, it's, it's not something that's going to be too hard to fix. Individually, we've just got to get our minds on the job, make sure we all do our job well, and then, and then as a side, we'll, we'll perform a bit better. I think um, last week towards the end of the game against Illawarra, we, we started to play better. And then again this week, probably this week, our intensity throughout the whole match was better. It, it dropped a little bit when we, when we got behind in the second half there, but we continued it right through to the end. And, and probably the way we played towards the end is Hopefully how we can get our side going for most of the games from here on in. At 16-6 down with, uh, say, 15 minutes to go, were you starting to hit the panic button at all? Well, I think that was the positive thing about it, that we didn't do that. We were probably panicking before that, early in the game. Uh, I think because of the fact we've just been struggling a touch, uh, we, we get into half a break and, and we want to push the pass. We think we have to score the try on that play, and, and that's our biggest problem. If we start to be a little bit smarter and realise, OK, we're struggling to touch, our confidence is a little bit down. Hold the ball if we make half a break, if, if the pass is an on and we'll score it on the next tackle. And we started to do that towards the end and, and it showed how well it works. Last week against Illawarra, you had to watch a, uh, a kick from uh, in front of the post which missed and you, you got away with the draw. This week you had a couple of late kicks uh, to, uh, to swing the match your way. So uh, you're obviously pleased with that. Yeah, very pleased. Uh, it's... No doubt I struggled a bit over the last few weeks with my goal kicking, but the way I hit that last one, I was pretty confident with it. The practice has been much better over the last couple of weeks and it went over. All right, the signs are there then for Norse? Well, I think so. Hopefully if we can continue in our next few games, the way we finished off. But uh, it, it's a problem because we, our minds are on the job tonight and, and we still struggled in the game. All right, the best of luck. Thanks very much for joining us. Well, thanks very much, Terry. And joining me now is uh, Norse coach Peter Louie. Nor uh, Peter, uh, obviously glad to get away with that after being down 16-6. Well, we haven't been playing all that great and uh, to come here tonight and get the two competition points was our main priority and uh, it wasn't flashed the way we went about it, but uh, we got the two competition points and that's, you know, that's good for us. I know that Phil Economides is standing next to us, but did you expect a tough battle from the coast? Without a doubt. There's a lot of respect. Um, you know, we hold them in a lot, with a great lot of respect, and uh, I think they match us in every department tonight, except towards the end. I thought our fitness just sort of got, got them in the end. And uh, uh, But as far as school level was concerned, as far as practice was concerned, I thought um, the, the team did a great job, and so did the coach. Coaches go to the school of uh, hard knocks and uh, grey hair and also uh, receding uh, hairline. Were you worried when, when the team was down by 10 points with uh, 10 or 12 minutes to go? Well, I was a little bit concerned even before the game started. Uh, you know, we went in with, a, with carrying a few injuries tonight and there's got to be a lot of credit there for the way they, uh, Fairley and Larson and, uh, and Florimo and Butner sort of got through. Um, 
Yeah, I'm always worried, uh, but uh, you know, and towards the end there, it was uh, it was a real thriller. So it was good for everybody. And a relief in the end that there were no further injuries. Yes, those players got through, fine and uh, yeah, that's that's a that's a godsend. All right, now, how do you look down further down the track? Is it a, a good sign now for Norths that perhaps you may be starting to turn it around? Well, you know, a win's you know, that's great for the club, and uh, you know, because we have been battling, like I said, you know, we've got to take it week by week, and we knew that uh, tonight it'd be hard. Uh, we've got South next week, and we're probably expecting the same sort of deal. Are you worried about the slow starts that you've had so far? Well, I thought tonight was a lot better than the previous <laughs> weeks. And, uh, you know, I think there was about 20 minutes on the clock before anything happened. And, uh, you know, that was something we, we uh, set a bit of a goal with during the week. And, um, yeah, well, uh, we'd like to be able to score first, that's for sure. Now, there was a bit of drama for the, uh, for the, um, the 20s and the uh, reserve grade for their travel arrangements. They couldn't get anywhere to stay here because of the uh, Gold Coast Indy. <laughs> Did that affect at all the overall club uh, attitude or performance, do you think, with them having to, you know, fly back home straight away? Oh, well, not really. I think it's, you know, they, they knew in the end that they had to come up here and get a job done and, uh, and go back on the same evening. So uh, even though we weren't successful on those two grades, um, you know, they knew what, what the job was all about. And, uh, you know, you can't, you, can't, uh, you can't worry too much about those things. Oh, well, congratulations and uh, good luck uh, against South next week. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. All right, there he is, North's coach Peter Louie. We'll turn around here and we'll catch up with Phil Economides, the Chargers coach. Uh, Phil, what do you say after having a team down 16-6 with uh, 10 or 15 minutes to go and then having to, uh, to lose the two competition points? Yeah, well, really there was no shame in uh, being defeated by a good side like Norse. I thought we had them on the rack, uh, probably could put the cue away, but then again, they, they lifted a the gear and, uh, you know, um, had the run of play and came back strongly, so full credit to them. And, uh, you know, as I said, I think... Uh, they found form tonight at our expense. Yeah, you were saying a little earlier to Peter, you had to pick tonight to turn it around. Yeah, I, I had a lot of uh, a lot of my blokes uh, were very courageous. I, you know, uh, Patton had a great game. Uh, uh, indeed, Chris Nahi, Jeremy Schloss, Jamie Goddard. There was, you know, the whole team tried. Uh, but as a, you know, we're trying to uh, build the club here again. You know, we've only been going since last mm. year. This is the first year we sort of had the luxury of a pre-season preparation. And uh, we've got to learn to win as a, as a team in those tight situations. And we just lost the plot there. And uh, I'm sure the boys will be uh, all the better for the experience. Mm. You must be proud of the enthusiasm and the commitment that the players showed here tonight. Yeah, well, you know, I, I probably sound a bit stupid every week saying that I am, how proud I am of these blokes. But that, you know, I sincerely mean that. Uh, you know, they don't lie down. As I said to uh, our local supporters, we can assure them that... Uh, We'll, we'll keep fighting right to the bell, and that's what the boys do. Uh, we'll, they never give up, and uh, you know we'll get better as uh, as the comp goes on this year. All right. Well, commiserations on not getting the two points, and good luck next week. Thanks very much, Bomber. Well, there he is, uh, the Gold Coast.